Welcome to the Air Gun Show. This week we've got the Virac HW100BP on test, but before that, I'm heading out hunting in Autumn Woodland. Right, I'm on a woodland permission today um, and what I think I'm probably going to do is as we make our way around we'll stop and take a look at some ways that you can really make the most of your shooting in woods at this time of year. Now we've got a fairly good chance of making a mixed bag. Uh, there are quite a few squirrels in these woods. Now at the moment my feeding stations aren't working so well and that's because things like acorns, uh, beech mast and even sweet chestnut are starting to ripen and the squirrels are very distracted by that so we may well target them around those areas. Also there are pheasant release pens here and they tend to attract a few corvids. And finally, the grain that's put out for the pheasants inevitably attract one or two wood pigeons but there's a bigger attraction here at the moment because a field on the same estate has just had an autumn uh, seed drilling and that's attracting a lot of wood pigeons. I've actually been shooting them there earlier in the week with the shotgun but it just so happens that um, an adjacent section of the woods is actually on a flight line that the pigeons use in and out of that field, so we could get some sport with them too. Um, my plan of attack is probably just gonna be a roving approach and then maybe stop off at one or two promising looking areas. Right, so if we kick off as usual with the kit, now the gun I'm using today is a legal limit sub 12 foot pound 177 caliber Zebroia Horticia. Now it's quite a, an affordable air gun, but it's proven itself over the last year or so to be a really effective hunting tool. I get on very well with it. Um, it's relatively lightweight, it's compact, and it's also very accurate. Um, it's got a really reliable multi-shot action that's driven by a really quick straight pull system that makes a really nice rapid reloading, so very nice little gun. The scope I'm using today is the PAO Topaz Swap Mark II from the shooting party. Now, I'd already been using um, a compact SWAT scope. This is a more recent version. Um, Andy Watkins has said very good things about it to me, so I thought I'd give it a try. Um, it is absolutely packed with features, including side parallax and an illuminated reticle. Um, this is the three to 12 by 44, so it's a decent sort of size and decent zoom range for air gun use. Um, it comes supplied with loads of extras. Um, a sunshade, flip-up lens covers, an oversized parallax wheel, and it even comes with a set of two-piece mounts. Now, I've just dropped mine straight into my usual sports match mounts today, uh, so I can fit it straight to the Picatinny rail on the Horticia. But uh, for £159.99, it really is shaping up to be a cracking little scope. Now, the final item of kit that I think is worthy of mention today is the uh, side shot phone mount that I'm using to hopefully capture some scope cam footage. Now, the great thing about this system is that it enables me to still look through the scope in the usual way while I'm recording. Now, I've practiced with it on the range. Um, the only problem that I am having is I don't think the quality I'm getting through the iPhone is as good as that that I was getting through my little homemade scope cam unit. Uh, the snag being that I can't see how I can manually lock the focus of the iPhone um, onto the reticle of the scope and also I can't override the image stabiliser so the sight picture is occasionally swaying around a little bit so if anybody knows solutions to those problems I'd love to hear them. Now those niggles aside it is really useful being able to mount the gun in a normal way and look straight through the scope rather than the screen that I'm accustomed to so we'll give it a try and see how it goes. As I explained, I'm planning to start off on the move, 
I'll be keeping my eyes peeled for quarry species and any signs of their presence as I make my way through the woods. Just like at any other time of the year, any hotspots are likely to be around areas where food is abundant. Right, I said at the outset that we try and look at a few ways to help you to get the best from your woodland shooting. Now, this is an attractor not to be ignored. Uh, pheasant feeder is just a ready food supply. It will attract all sorts of pests from rats, magpies, pigeons, and in particular, grey squirrels. Now, at this time of year, it's still a little bit early for it to come into its own because there's just so much natural wild food around. But we have had some fantastic days targeting the feeders on this particular shoot. Uh, shoot a lot of grey squirrels around them in the winter months. And in fact, we've even, even uh, featured those sessions in one or two of our videos. So well worth keeping an eye on the feeding stations. Once it turns colder and that natural food is a bit thinner on the ground, the pests will turn to them. There may not be much activity around the pheasant feeders just yet, but it's not long before we get a chance at a magpie close to a stand of oak trees. It's down. The magpie was solidly hit and appeared to drop pretty cleanly. I just need to find it in the undergrowth. Well, that was an unexpected surprise. Got a bit hectic there. I was trying to stalk through some fairly crunchy stuff and a couple of magpies came bundling in pretty close. This one had to be closer than 20 metres away. Um, I had to shoot pretty quickly because they don't tend to hang around for long. So I went for the next shot, gave it a little bit of hold under, whopped it down, and uh, it's got us up and running. Right, let's see what else we can get. Right. Here's a very encouraging sign. Big oak tree here. The ground all around is absolutely smattered with the remains of chewed up acorns. Um, and that says to me that the squirrels have been feeding here. Now, there are also a heck of a lot of beech trees in these woods. And up until a couple of weeks ago, that's where most of the squirrels were. Um, and that goes part of the way to explaining why my feeding stations don't have the sort of attraction that they have up until recently. Now, what's happened now is the beech mass seems to have gone off the boil. The squirrels have moved onto these acorns. I don't doubt that this particular stand of oaks has probably got numerous squirrels around. So, and we're also quite close to the flight line I mentioned earlier on that those pigeons are using. So I think what I'll do is set up somewhere close to here and we'll see what comes along. I don't want to make too much noise now, but I've picked a spot that gives me fairly clear shots between about 20 and 30 metres up into that stand of oak trees. Now, I'm not going to mess about building a hide here. The disturbance it would cause would ruin any chance of us getting any shots from now. So I've just settled in as quickly and quietly as I can, put my head net on, but the tree has a bit of a backdrop and I'm in the shadows. So that should give me a reasonable amount of concealment just a question now of being patient and seeing what happens. I might have managed to bag a magpie while I was on the move, but sit and wait tactics are my preferred option when I find a potential hotspot. And it looks like the approach is about to produce the goods from these acorn heavy oaks.
Well, there you go. That squirrel was just making its way down the tree trunk and it actually had an acorn in its mouth. The shot was about 25 metres, I gave it a bit of hold under. The squirrel did dangle for a few seconds but that was just its reflexes. It looked to me like it caught it just below the eye. It's a very swift kill. Hopefully there are a few more around. Believe it or not, I never get bored when I'm waiting like this. There's always something going on in the woods. I'm not having to wait too long today though. One of the pigeons that are raiding that seed drill has just swooped in within range. I just need to get a clear aim through the leaves. I don't know what you were able to see of that. That was a pigeon felled with a headshot. Now that was quite a lot of glare and I could only really just about see its head. Um, but it's dropped it really cleanly. It was about a 30 metre shot and certainly not a shot that what I would have fancied taking without the sticks. This spot has yielded a couple of good shots, but it looks like I'm going to have to be satisfied with modest pickings. A very long quiet spell suggests that we've had the best of it from here. Well, we had quite a productive start from this spot, but we haven't seen anything for the last hour or so, so I think the most sensible thing to do is probably for me to move on and try somewhere else. So I'm going to get my kit sorted out and I'm going to pick up what we've had. Right, well, there's the squirrel, and as I thought, it looks like it was hit just beneath the ear, maybe a little bit lower than ideal, but it was still lights out, and the pigeon should be on just a bit further. Right. And there's our woody. A uh, fairly young bird, you can see it still hasn't got its, uh, its white bars on its neck yet, but very clear white bars on the wings. It's still got quite a long beak, that seems to be more pronounced in younger birds. And as for that shot, it looks like it's passed straight through its head, so really good, very clean kill shot there. Now, the plan is I'm going to pick up the rest of my kit, head on and try somewhere else, and if that turns out to be any good, we'll show you in a future episode. Not a bad session in the autumn woods there, and we managed to add a couple more squirrels later on. Now, it's the Air Gun Show News. This is the Air Gun Show News. Shooting organisations admit that further restrictions are likely when it comes to lead-based ammunition. Responding to an article in the Times calling for the use of lead to stop, Basque, the Countryside Alliance, the GWCT and NGO teamed up to send in a response that said shooters aren't resisting change, but instead are working together, acting positively and promoting all research and development into new products. They emphasised that shooting needs to be given the appropriate time to make any required transitions. Get all the gear you need in the latest edition of Airgun Shooter magazine. This new issue reviews two iconic British airguns and their new geysers, the BSA R10 from the Brocock Compato HR Sniper. There's also a Discovery Scope on test and a pair of shooting bags from Military First. Plus, there's rabbiting after a rainfall and shooting technique from the 1930s. Egg and Shooter is out now in Good News Agents or subscribe at myfavouritemagazines.co.uk. And while you're reading Egg and Shooter, don't miss the chance to win a Gamo Box at Bullpup worth £569. It's not only short and handy, but light too, at under 3.5 kilos. It's made in England and features a cold hammer-forged barrel that ensures accuracy, a full-length shroud and a pressure gauge. 
If you're looking for a budget bullpup with a reliable magazine, superb shot-to-shot consistency and accuracy, then take a closer look at the Gamo Boxer. For more details on the competition, just head to the address on screen now. And finally, voting is open now in the Great British Shooting Awards. Now in their second year, the awards allow the shooting public to have their say in a wide range of categories, celebrating the products and people that make the shooting industry tick. The awards have grown and added new categories, including an award for most innovative new product. To see the shortlists and cast your vote, head to the address on screen now. That was the Egg and Show News. Our reviews seem to have been awash with bullpup air guns this year. There seems to be a real demand for these guns at the moment, and I've got a very special one on the bench this week. It's the Virac HW100 BP. Distributed in the UK by Hull Cartridge, it retails for £1,140. The Ambid Extra stock is made from beech with a soft touch finish. It feels very robust and should be easy to keep clean. It's also nice and chunky and feels very comfortable. A feature I really like is that this stock incorporates the HW44 pistol grip. It's nice and steep, brilliantly contoured and sets you up really well for the trigger. As bull pups go, the cheek support is extremely comfortable thanks to its rounded profile. The rubber butt pad is height adjustable and it's surprising what a difference a small tweak can make to your eye alignment with the scope. Now there's no checkering or stippling on this stock, yet it still manages to feel reassuringly grippy even in the wet. The HW100 BP is available in an extremely stubby carbine version. This is the full length model, which is 10 centimeters longer, but still measures a relatively compact 82 centimeters with the supplied silencer fitted. Virac has a reputation for making solid air guns, and this one is no exception. This variant weighs 3.7 kilos without a scope fitted, but it feels robust rather than heavy. Virac is famous for its high quality engineering, and you can see why. The finish of the metalwork is immaculate and overall build quality is also excellent. As I mentioned earlier, the BP comes supplied with a Virac silencer. Not only does it really suit the styling of this gun, it also happens to be one of the best moderators out there and it reduces muzzle report to a mere whisper. The gun comes supplied with the increasingly popular Picatinny type scope rail, although you can remove it to reveal the conventional dovetail rail beneath. Now, in my opinion, the rails on too many ball pups are just too high. Thankfully, Virac has managed to keep the gap between the top of the rail and the center of the bore down to about three centimeters, so this one doesn't feel too top heavy. Sticking with the engineering theme, the HW100 BP runs Virac's tried and tested 14 shot rotary magazine. It looks very simple, but I think that's its strong point. My own HW100 runs exactly the same magazine and it has never missed a beat. It runs like clockwork and it's also very pellet friendly. To remove the magazine, pull the side lever all the way back then push back the retaining clip and the mag pulls out from the right hand side. You reload it with the smooth side facing away from you. When it's full, you push it back in, return the retaining clip, push the side lever forwards and then the gun is loaded, cocked and ready to go. The HW100 side lever cocking and loading mechanism works brilliantly. And I reckon it's the reason that so many manufacturers are switching from bolt to side lever actions. This one is well positioned and works with that excellent magazine to deliver fast and positive follow-up shots on the range and in the field. The trigger is also very good, just as you would expect from Virac, and it doesn't have any of the creep that so often blights triggers on ball pups. It's a two-stage adjustable unit with a nice wide blade 
and it was set perfectly straight from the box. The first stage has just the right amount of weight and travel and it comes to a positive stop before the second stage breaks very cleanly. There's a safety catch positioned beneath the rear of the cheek support. Although that may not be the best place for easy access, you can operate it from both sides and it's safely away from the trigger. You can't set the safety unless the gun is cocked. It's safe when it's in the rearward position and then you push it forwards when you're ready to shoot. Although the HW100BP doesn't have a regulator in the conventional sense, it is fitted with what Viruck describes as a self-regulating action and it's very consistent. This gun is producing 11.5 foot-pounds and showed a variation of just 7 feet per second over a string of 10 shots. Remaining air reserves are displayed on a clear gauge at the front of the cylinder. It's just a bit of a shame that you have to look down from the muzzle end to see it. The air cylinder is removable and shot capacity is pretty impressive for such a compact gun. From a full 200 biofill, this model returns up to 110 shots in 177 and 140 in 22. In the much smaller carbine version, you can expect those figures to drop to 50 and 75, so around half. When it's time to refill, simply pull out the plug at the front of the cylinder and push in the supplied quick fill probe. So, that's the Virac HW100BP, a very well-appointed bullpup. Let's put out a target and I'll show you what it can do. Well, I think that's one of the best five shot groups that we've produced in any of the reviews on the show so far. Um, and I expect anybody that shoots a pre-charged Virac won't be too surprised about that. Now we've been very fortunate, it is, although it keeps trying to spit with rain, it is an absolutely windless day, so we've got perfect conditions for it. The trigger felt absolutely great. And as a consequence, the 177 caliber test gun it's just churned out a 30 meter five shot group that is practically pellet on pellet. That makes this gun a very serious hunting tool. There's no denying that the Virac HW100BP continues in the German gun maker's rich tradition for making quality air guns. It's tough, reliable, and very accurate. Now, Virac weren't exactly early joining the pre-charged party and they've also been pretty late jumping on the bullpup bandwagon. However, what they have managed to do is get it dead right both times. The Virac HW100BP is an impressive piece of kit and I certainly think it's worth its asking price. Look out for the new and improved Airgun Shooter magazine. Pack full of technique, gear and insight from some of the best shooters in the industry. Brand new look and free video content. Pick up your copy today in stores or online. That's all for this week, but as ever, we'll be back again in a fortnight. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you aren't already a member of the BASC, have a look at their website and check out the benefits that you could be taking advantage of through Airgun Membership.